Welcome, this is Cagayan Valley, Philippines Region 2. For starters, just a little bit of background, Cagayan Valley is designated as Region 2 and it is an administrative region in the Philippines located in the northeastern section of Luzon Island. And it is also composed of five provinces, Batanes, Cagayan, Sabela, Nueva Vizcaya, and Quirino. The region hosts four chartered cities of Kauayan, Ilagan, Santiago, and Tugigaraw. Most areas is situated on Cagayan Valley are between the Cordilleras and Sierra Madre mountain ranges. Cagayan Valley is the second largest Philippine administrative region by land area. And part of its history, the earliest inhabitants are the Agta or Ata food gatherers who roam the forest without fixed dwellings or houses. A large tract of land has lately been removed or returned to them and the bulk of the population are Malay origin. Four centuries before the coming of the Spaniards or the Spanish, the inhabitants traded with Indians Malay, Chinese, and Japanese. In the 19th century of the prosperity found in tobacco or tobacco cultivation caused many Ilocano or Ilocano people settled here. Tobacco is still a major factor in the economy of Cagayan through a special economic zone and free fort has been created to strengthen and diversify the provincial economy. During the Spanish era, Cagayan Valley had a larger territory than today. Then, throughout the years, it changed. Then, it included the territories of the above mentioned provinces and the eastern part of the Cordillera provinces, namely Apayao, Kalinga, Ifugao, and Benguet. Historian and missionary Jose Borges said, the old Cagayan Valley comprises the province of Cagayan, Isabela, and Nueva Vizcaya, as well as the military district of Apayao, Itaves, Iingan, Mayapa, and Bintangan, plus the area of Sierra Madre to the Pacific Ocean in the said trajectory. And a little bit of the past, during World War II at Balete, in Balete Pass, in Nueva Vizcaya, the retreating Japanese Imperial Army under General Tomoyuki Yamashita dug in and held on for three months against the American and Filipino forces who eventually drove them out. The pass is now called Dalton Pass in honor of General Dalton of USA who was killed in that fight. About its geography, Cagayan Valley is a large mass of land in the northeastern region of Luzon, comprising the provinces, as I've said earlier, Cagayan, Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, Quirino, and Batanes group of islands. It is bordered to the west by the Cordillera Mountain, to the east by the Sierra Madre, to the south by the Caraballo Mountains, and to the north by the Luzon Strait. The region contains two landlocked or landlocked provinces, Quirino and Nueva Vizcaya, which are ruggedly mountain ridge or 
mountainous and heavenly forested. Nueva Vizcaya is the remnant of the southern province created when Cagayan province was divided into two in 1839. They are ethically and linguistically diverse with substrate of Agtas, Negritos, who are food gatherers with no fixed abodes or houses, uh, overlaid with Ilongots and other in a number of tribes, some of whom were fierce headhunters. They have given up the practice, however, with the latest but largest element of the population being Ilocanos, they are closely followed by Ivanaig. As you see in this screen, these provinces have their own capital in Batanes, Basco, Cagayan is Tugigaraw, Isabela is Ilagan, Nueva Vizcaya is Bayumbong, Quirino is Sabarugis. And of course, the introduction of Cagayan Valley will not be completed if I will not say some of this tourist destination. The first one is Palawi Island. It is one of the emerging tourist spots in Cagayan Valley. Located off the coast of mainland Luzon, this rustic paradise offers an experience of a lifetime, especially for nature lovers and adventurers. Pristine rainforest covers the island, and here and there are monkeys, wild pigs, numerous bird species, and giant Nara trees. Visitors can enjoy exploring the island's terrestrial and ecosystem of plunge into the rejuvenating coastal waters. On its coast, you can find the white beaches and blue lagoons. It is perfect for getaways if you prefer less touristy destination and it is located in Santa Ana. And the next one is the Northern Sierra Madre National Park. This park is one of the underrated duties spot in Cagayan Valley because um, it hosts one of the country's few remaining primarily forests or primary forest that is home to the critically endangered species such as the Philippine monkey eating eagle or the Philippine eagle. It is a perfect spot for hiking or mountaineering and much of it remains unexplored. Hiking to the park will therefore lead tourists into rare encounters with the wild. Caves, waterfalls, and blue lagoons can be found. Its coasts are lined with pristine beaches. Unfortunately, human encroachment and development are threatening this fragile ecosystem. The third one on the list is the Kalau Cave. Kalau Cave is among the most frequently tourist destination in Cagayan Valley. It features a seven-chambered cave with stunning limestone or uh, rock formation reminiscent of a cathedral dome. <laughs> one of these chambers contains a stone altar illuminated by a natural sunlight or skylight that gives the cave an eerie catacomb-like experience. Then, then there's the cave where millions of bats dwell and another cave that hosts numerous red-billed hornbills. One of the caves here are houses the Basilica Minore of Our Lady of Fayat. It is located in Peña Balanca. Next on the list is the Pinacanawan River. It is one of the largest tributaries of the Cagayan River. Considered the longest and the mightiest river in the Philippines, it is crystal clear the water comes from vast, deep pterocarp and mossy forest upstream. Whitewater rafting, boating, and kayaking are among the prime activities done here. 
It is also home to endemic marine species. The locals hold a boat rowing race called Bancarera every April 12th. It is also located in Piña Blanca. The next one is Bagao's Blue Waterfalls and Cave. They feature or it features a series of beautiful cascades with beautiful pools reflecting the blue sky. There are many underground rivers where bats and birds dwell. Here, you'll also find different rock formations. It's best to come here during the summer months of March to April to enjoy the best views. It is one of the best places to go in Cagayan Valley. It is located in Bangao with a 2-hour trekking time. Next in our list is the St. Peter's Cathedral. It is one of the historical tourist spots in Cagayan Valley. It sits at the Archdiocese of Tugigarao and is considered the biggest Spanish-style church in the province. It's one or it's wide compound and it is a good spot for reflection or meditation. Daily masses are celebrated here and every year thousands of pilgrims visit the church. It is located into Gigarao City. The next is the Calvary Hill. If you are a Catholic pilgrim, you should not miss visiting this spot. It is one of the most religious or popular religious tourist spots in Cagayan Valley. Not only does one experience a spiritual connection as they say, but also the natural beauty of the place. For the hill, you can have a stunning view of the Cagayan River and the lush landscape and rolling hills on the distance. It's best to come here during the late afternoon to catch the amazing view of sunset. There's also an old church which celebrates Sunday Masses. It is located in Igig. For the next one, unfortunately I don't have a picture but you can just google it or find it in the internet, the San Vicente Mangrove Forest. It is one of the most preserved nature tourist spots in Cagayan Valley. You'll get to see them when you ride a bangka or a boat along the narrow passage. Expect to see birds of different kinds such as heron and egret. Organizers usually include the forest as part of the tour package in Andig Beach. It is located in San Vicente, Santa Ana. And now the Angib Beach. As one of the premium tourist spots in Cagayan province, although popular, it is generally off beaten compared to highly commercialized destinations like Boracay or El Nido in Palawan. It's one of the most pristine beaches in the country. Although it is hard to reach, you'll get instant relief from gazing at its crystal clear water, white sand, and stunning rocks. It is located in Santa Ana. And the next destination is the Million of Bat Assembly. The forest and giant caves of Cagayan is home to some of the most remaining refugees of endemic bats, known as the circadian bat flight. This phenomenon involves millions of bats going out from the cave and forming a spectacular formation as they make their way for foraging. These bats are visible when cruising the Tinakanawan River near Kalau Cave. It is located at Piña Blanca. The next one on our list is the Tagat Lagoon. It is not just an ordinary lagoon and breathtaking seascape. And there's a mystery that you can ask with the locals. You can find here two rock formations called Lakay Lakay and Baket Baket. There's a reason why they are named as such. That is why there's a sense of enchantment when you visit here. It is located in Flaveria. The next one is Bagsang Falls. If you're into chasing waterfalls, don't miss visiting this spot. 
Bagsang post may demand extra effort and time but as soon as you reach it, it is worth it. This small but charming waterfall has cold and crystal clear waters that can soothe your muscles after the long trek. Then, then there's the surrounding forest which teems with flora and fauna species. It is located in Barangay Santa Clara, Gonzaga. And as we near the end, the next one is the Atulu Pateri Village. If you want to experience pateri or watch how it's done, then you should see Atulu Pateri Village. The locals here have been making clay pots of different design and sizes for centuries. They use a rare type of red clay which is found in the area. It is, the location is found in Barangay Atulu Igig. And the next one, the 14th one, the Nasiping Church Ruin. If you're fond of historical or cultural treasures, do visit Nasiping Church Ruin. Sitting on a site where both the mighty Chico and Cagayan River meet. This ancient structure was built by the Spaniards. Some parts of the church such as stones, side altar, and bell tower are still intact. It is located in Barangay Nasiping, Getaran. The next one is the Zinago Cove. Similar to those in El Nido and Coron, Palawan, Zinago Cove is one of the premier natural tool spots in Cagayan Valley. Limestone mountains and rock formations rise above the sea creating a breathtaking scenery. Take a boat and tour around this masterpiece and you'll find yourself lost in time. It is located in Santa Ana and it is accessible via boat ride for one hour from San Vicente Port. The next one is Our Lady of Payat Basilica. This basilica is one of the most visited religious tourist spots in Cagayan province. It houses the Petronas of Cagayan Valley, which is originally came from Macau, China. Number 17 is the Calayan Island. It is one of the most visited tourist spots in Cagayan Valley. It features raw and unspoiled destinations such as white beaches, stunning corals, pristine forests, and scenic grass formation. This is the Duba Cave. It is one of the caves that is found in Bagao. A river with crystal clear water runs inside the cave. Expect to get wet when you come here. The river leads into a beautiful spectacle called Skylight Falls. It is located in San Miguel, Bagao. The next one is the Kalimudinan Falls. Measuring more than a hundred meters high, Kalimudinan Falls is one of the highest falls in the entire province. Its pristine water comes from the forest of Sierra Madre. It is one of the remotest tourist spots in Cagayan province. Expect to trek on a dense forest before getting here. It is located in Santa Margarita, Bagao. And the trekking time is a whopping 5 hour of absolute adventure. And the last one is the Malawi Church. It is one of the oldest historical tourist spots in Cagayan province, dating back from the Spanish period. It is a favorite pilgrimage site among the locals and even tourists. It is located in Rizal.